This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Okay, good afternoon everyone. Shalom Aleichem. Today is Shiva Asar Be Tamuz. I hope everyone is having an easy fast so far. But after, once we start going, you'll forget your fasting. You'll be, you'll be elevated to a different realm. You won't even realize that it's Shiva Asar Tamuz anymore other than the fact that the topic of the shir is Shiva Asabatamas. Okay, so we have a very interesting Gemara in Megillah, Daf Hey Omed Aleph, going on to Hey Omed Beis. Ama Rabbi Elazar, Ama Rabbi Chanina, Rabbi, Rabbi Huda Nasi, Nata Netia B'Porem. He planted a planting on Purim. Interesting, he planted a planting on Purim. That means he did Malacha on Purim. Virachatz, and he bathed. Bekroina shel Tzipari, in a wagon in the city of Tzipari, Beshiva Asar Betamos, on the 17th day of Tamos. Now there's a question whether the Chamish Inuyim are in effect on the other Tanesim. They're certainly in effect on Tishabav. There's a question, are they in effect on the other Tanesim? Because the question is, are we really in a state of Sheba Malchius today? Are we not in a state of Sheba Malchius today? Rebbe bathed publicly in uh, the wagon of Tzipori on the seventh day of Tammuz. So the question is, uh, is that appropriate? What is the propriety of that? Ubike Shlakar Tishabav. And he wanted to uproot Tishabav. Now, who wouldn't, right? But, you know, when we say he wanted to, he actually uh, would have the authority to do so. And uh, he wanted to uproot Tishabav. Vilay Haidulai. They did not agree with him on that one. Vilay Haidulai. They didn't agree with him. Amar Lafan of Rabbi Abba Barzavda. Rabbi Abba Barzavda said before him, Rabbi Laikacha Yamaisa. For Rabbi, that was not the situation. You can't say that Rabbi straight up wanted to uproot Tishabav. You have to get the story straight. Let's explain. What was the circumstance that Rebbe wanted to be Oikar Tishabav? Ella Tishabav Shechaliyos B'Shabbos Hava. It was the Tishabav that fell out on Shabbos. And we know when Tishabav comes out on Shabbos, what do we do with Tishabav? We postpone it, but we don't advance it. Why don't we advance it? Because Akdume Paranus Oloi Makdaminon. We don't advance punishment. V'dachinu Liachar Shabbos. And he, it was pushed off to Sunday. But I'm a Rebbe, and Rebbe said, Hovenidcha Yidcha, you know, once you're pushing it off, just get rid of it completely. Now the Chachamim didn't agree with that. We hold that if Tisha B'av comes out on Shabbos, it is pushed off to Sunday. But Rebbe wanted to get rid of Tisha B'av. So Marv Rabbi the question is, of all the Yitanoim, why specifically was it Rebbe who wanted to be Oiker Tisha B'av? And Rebbe Akiva, he's good with Tisha B'av and Hillel, and Shammai. In other words, why specifically Rebbe? And you can ask the same thing about Shiva Asabatamos. Why was it Rebbe that showed the bathing on Shiva Asabatamos? Why specifically Rebbe? Okay. There is a Pasuk in Zechariah. When we learn Sefer Zechariah, we learned this Pasuk. It's a very important Pasuk. Regarding the Dalet Hanesim, we'll introduce it in the following way. We know one of the tragedies that occurred on Shabbos of Atamos was the breaking of the Luchais, which was precipitated by the making of the Egal. The Egal occurred on Shabbos of Atamos. We spoke out many times. There's a Pasuk in, Teh- in Tehillim. Vaya miru es kvaidam betavnes shar oichel esev. Very good. They exchanged God with the image of an ox that eats esev grass. So we asked, who cares what the cow eats? And if the cow eats kishka, then it's less avoid zara. Why does the, the Pasuk and Tilm say the cow was Oichel Esev? Ah, so very good. So the Navi is not telling us, David is not telling us what the cow eats. He's telling us the date. The date is Esev, Shiva Asar Betamas. Now, Aaron, when he is trying to make the Egal, so he's stalling for time. He figures if he's going to have Klal Yisrael make the Egal, then it's going to happen quickly. So he postpones it. He says, you know, let's do it tomorrow. Chag Lashem Machar. Tomorrow will be a holiday. What, what did Aaron mean? A holiday. Tomorrow is going to be a, a terrible day of tragedy, of fasting. But Aaron Akoy knew that in the future, Shiva Sabatamos would turn into a day of a great Yom Tif. Like the Navi says in Zechariah, Koyamar Hashem Tzavakos, Tzayim Haravi, V'tzayim HaChamishi, V'tzayim HaShavi, V'tzayim HaAsiri, Yiyah Lebeis Yehuda. 
will be for the house of Judah, l'sasayin or l'simcha, for joy and happiness, l'mayadim tovim, and for yamtiv. So we have a tradition that l'asid l'avay, the tanesim will turn into yamim tovim. So when Aaron HaKoyin said, chag l'ashem machar, what he meant was, yesh machar l'achar zman. And therefore, uh, we're going to admit when he said we'll make the Egel tomorrow and it's going to be a Yom Tif, he meant, yeah, one day in the future when Mashiach comes, the day of Shavas HaBetamas will be a Yom Tif. But the question is, if you look carefully at the words of the Navi, the Navi says, what will be a Yom Tif? Yiyah Lebeis Yehuda. Will be for the house of Yehuda. What do you mean Lebeis Yehuda? Lebanai Yisrael. Why only Shevet Yehuda? It's not only for Shevet Yehuda. The Tanesim, all Jews fast, whether they come from Shevet Naphtali or Zavulan or Gad. And La'asad Lavai will revert into a day of happiness for all of Klal Yisrael. Therefore, why does the Pasuk say specifically Lebeis Yehuda? Okay. Let's talk about one of my favorite subjects. The encounter of Rus and Bayaz. So Nami tells Rus. Don't worry, this is not going to be a long, drawn-out uh, courting. Vatoimer shiviviti. Ad asher until you know. Well, rest until you know. Echi pol davar. Ki lo yishkoit ha'ish. This man, Boyaz, will not be tranquil. Ki yim kila ha'davar hayoim. He's going to settle the matter today. He's going to take care of business today. He will not let grass grow between his toes. He's not going to let anything, uh, the dust settle, he, he's going to let you know Adar Ya, Adar Nish today. So how did Nami know that Bayaz would settle the matter today? This was a very complex uh, arrangement over here. First of all, could he even marry her? She's from Mayav. Are women from Mayav Mutter? Are they not Mutter? There's a whole machloikis. Bayaz was not sure. Nobody was sure. How did Nami know? You know, not every... He's not even first online. And not every halachic matter could be settled in one day. So how did Bayaz, how did Nami know that he's going to settle the matter today? Okay. My Rabbi Yisai today begins the period of the three weeks. You know, the Sifri Drush all talk about how many days in the three weeks? 21 days, right? The 20, in fact, Yermia uh, Hanavi saw Nevua Amakal Shaked. An al- a, a blossoming al- almond, brand- almond tree. And we know the time that it takes an almond tree to blossom is 21 days. And that represents the uh, 21 days of Peronios. The truth is that there aren't 21 days of Peronios. There are 22 days of Peronios. Anybody who knows even first grade math knows that if Shavasavatamas is a Tuesday, and Tisha B'Av is a Tuesday, then there are 22 days in the three weeks. So all the Sfarim that talk about 21 days, what in the world do they mean? But that's a discussion for another time. Rav Pinchas Friedman uh, sent me a mimer that he wrote on the airplane on the way to Eretz Yisrael, um, explaining how do you reconcile the concept of 21 days with 22 days. In any event, we have a tradition about Tisha B'Av that something very significant occurred on Tisha B'av. What occurred on Tisha B'av? It's a medrash in Bamid Bar Rabba. Amar lohem, af hi enot sara ela simcha. Tisha B'av is not a day of tragedy, it's a day of joy. Shaboy bayoim noilad menachem. On that day, Menachem was born. Who's Menachem? Who's Menachem? Mashiach. Ubay bayoim natlu yusa'a ipoichi ala menaseim. And on this day, our sins were atoned. The Amar of Shmuel Bar Nachman, Ipoichi Shleima Natli Yisrael Menasem, Biyom Shachar Beis Amikdash, and Amar, Tamavo Inehech, Batsiya In Lahi Yosef, Lahag Loisech. So we have a tradition that Mashiach was born on Tisha B'Av. Isn't that a strange day for Mashiach to be born? Here, Tisha B'Av ain't no happy day. First Beis Amikdash, second Beis Amikdash, Beit is plowed over. They, all the tragedies that occurred on Tisha B'av, why would Mashiach be born on Tisha B'av? I mean, you would think, do we, uh, is Tisha B'av a day that is considered we do God's will or we don't do God's will? We don't. 
you would think to create a Mashiach, you need like a zchus. You know, Tisha B'Av is not, is not our finest day. It's not our best day. Why would Mashiach be born? And incredibly, we discover another interesting thing that we observed when the Beis Hamikdash was being destroyed. Look in Malachim Aleph, Parak Zayin, Pasuk Lamed Vav. It was in, inscribed, engraved on the Luchais. Vial miskaroiseha kruvim arayos v'simrois kemar ish v'loyos saviv. This is a description of the luchais at the time that Beis Hamikdash was destroyed. Kemar ish v'loyos saviv says the Gemara in Yuma. Daf nun dalit amid aleph, going on to nun dalit amid beis. Everyone good? Everyone in a good mood today? Yeah, food is overrated. Come on. You have more time to do things, right? i look in number six. Uchsev. Kemar ish velayos. My kemar ish velayos. Amar Rabba barav shila. Ke ish hamaura belavaya shalai. Like a man enveloped and intertwined with his companion. Meaning they saw the two kruvim embracing. Like a husband and a wife. Like ish isha. Amar ishlakish. I need another battery, quick. Just toss it. In. When you enter the Hechal, they saw the Kruvim embracing like Ish Ve'isha. Amar Ish Lakish. Okay, very nice. So the Kruvim were embracing on that fateful day, which is half of a fella, because the Gemara says in Baba Basar, that the Gemara tells us the Kruvim moved. Not every day were the Kruvim in the same position. Sometimes they faced each other, sometimes they didn't face each other. And the Gemara discusses what does it depend on? Says the, the Gemara Baba, so the Manda Amar Pneim Ishal Achiv, according to the Manda Amar that they faced each other, Haksiv Upneim Labayas, says they faced away. Loi Kasha, Kan Bizman She Yisrael Oisin Ritzayne Shalmakoim, Kan Bizman She Ain Yisrael Oisin Ritzayne Shalmakoim. That when the Jews did the will of God, they faced each other. When the Jews did not do the will of God, they turned away from each other. So if you were to imagine what the Kruvim would have looked like, on the day the base of Migdash was destroyed, I would imagine they probably ran off. They jumped off. They, they jumped off. They committed suicide or something. They, or they flew away. And yet the Gemara in Yuma says, not only did they, were they not opposite, not only were they facing each other, they were embracing. So comes the Holy Sefer, B'nai Yisachar, Rabbi al Malach Midinov, and he says he heard from the Rav HaKadosh, Meireinu HaRav Rapinchas Mikaretz, regarding the Yushalmi and the Medrash, that Mashiach was born on Tisha B'av, and he gives the following explanation from Rav Pinchas Karasar. Well, you, we were talking about airports before, so let's talk about the airport. You know, you could have people, they bicker, they fight, they're at each other's throat, they're in each other's hair, but as soon as one of them sends off the other to the, on the airplane, oh, they embrace and they show Ava, Viachva, Shalom, Bereus, Chiba, Chibok, everything, you name it. All of a sudden, they... Why? Because there's a concept, right? Absence makes the heart grow fond. And there's a certain longing that's aroused when you realize that you're going to be away from somebody. So even though you can't stand each other and you hate each other's guts, but at the airport, you know, you, we're, uh, we're going to miss fighting with each other. Right? Well, right? Even in the airport, they have a special area. Well, all of a sudden now, they, they haven't said... Uh, yeah. So they haven't, so they haven't spoken in five years. All of a sudden, th- that's the human nature. Human nature is when, when, at, when there's going to be a period of absence, it creates a certain longing. That's why there's a halacha that a um, person has, a, let's say, a marital obligation. Sometimes it's a dairaisa, let's say, leal tefillah. Or if a person sees that the woman is uh, wants, but uh, uh, before a person goes away, they have a chiv dairaisa. Why? Because the, the absence creates a certain longing. Well, it's the same thing with the Yavan Shalom. 
no matter how badly we had to depart from each other. In fact, we left. Um, that we're like an amana. What do you mean? And the Gemara says only ke amana, but not amam, amana mamish. Our husband didn't chasasham die, but it's like baila shahalach lamadina sayam. So at the moment that God is leaving us, despite our many sins, despite Avodah Zarah, Gilei Arayus, and Shvichas Damen, despite the oinesh and the anger that Hashem has for us, but the fact that He has to leave, it creates a longing. And that longing created what we call a zivog and a chibok and a ava v'achva that was unparalleled. Now, to create a Mashiach, for Mashiach to be conceived conceptually, that requires a connection to God that we never had. Sometimes it's at the moment of departure when you know, you know what, we got to separate, we're not going to see each other for a long time. That creates an intimate connection that was never, ever created at any other time. Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av because that's the moment of our separation. And it's like before we depart, Hashem said, okay, one last, one last, a moment together with Kal Yisrael. That's the concept that Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av. Will be born, is born, both. Definitely will be born. Conceptually, there's a certain Geula which is created on Tisha B'av. He says, Hatamhu, in number 8 on the fourth line in Aleph. Lias Nishmas Mashiach ben David. The soul of Mashiach. Is the loftiest, most encompassing soul. For this birth, it's required. This neshama requires zivug hayoser elyon, the most supreme union. Let's take an analogy from the physical world. The love of friends, the ish husband and wife, biyosam biyachad. When they're together, husband and wife, they're going shopping. You don't see the love. They're always together. Right? But when they need to separate from each other, then the soul is stirred with a mighty love, migoidel hagagum from the great longing. Vialkain Chayev Adam Lufkadis Ishta Bisha Shiatzal Darach, says Gmarni Bamas, Samak Bezum and Bez. Then Kain Tisboyne Lufiza. The Bishas Hapirod at the time of separation, Azhu Hazivog bi Ava Yusira Biyosar. Then the the union is with greater love. Umikri Zivak Hayoser Elyain. Binoilad Mizen Shama Hayoser Elyaina from such a union is produced the loftiest soul. Since when did we separate? When do we separate on Tishabav? That's called God leaves us. From there, Mashiach was born. So says the Bnei Saskar, he quotes. Um, the Talmidim of Doiv Ber, the Magdim Ezrich, that why when why, when the enemies entered the Heichal, did they see the Kruvim embracing? But we know, they face away from each other. And he said that, that very cryptically, but now we can understand, the Kruvim were embracing in fulfillment of Chayiv Adam Lifkoides Ishtai, Bisha Shayotza Ladarach. How do we know what they saw? The, the Daily Roman Chronicle, they published it. That when they went in, they saw that the Kruvim were um, embracing. Okay. Marv Rabbi say, if that's the case, if the concept is that on a day that God leaves us, it creates a certain moment of intimacy that produces a great soul, what then happened on Shiva Asabatamas? I mean, we know a lot of bad things. The carbon tumid, um, excuse me, the Luchais were broken. And the Karmen Tamid stopped, and the walls were breached, and the Torah was burnt, and a Tzalem was put up in a Heichal. But, okay, those are the bad things, but what, are the, what positively was created on Shavas and Tamas? Says a Heilagach Sam Soifer, that if you make a Cheshben, we know that 
Rus spent the whole season in the threshing floor, Ad Kalois Katsir Hachitim Hasa'irim, which is three months. And she came, she uh, came the first time on Erev Pesach, the Targum says. And therefore the three months were up on the 15th day of Tammuz. And she sent a message to Rus on that night of the 16th. And she lay there the night of the 16th, and then the next day, the day of the 16th, Nami tells Rus, don't you worry, he's going to settle the matter today. How did she know he's going to settle the matter today? So says the Chsam Soifer, because as much as terrible and as tragic as the three weeks are, they are primarily tragic for Beis Yehuda, for the house of the Davidic dynasty. Why? Because the ten tribes were not exiled during the three weeks. The ten tribes were exiled a hundred years before the Chorban. The three weeks is bad days for Malchus Beis Yehuda. And Boaz, being the progenitor of Malchus Beis Yehuda, knows it ain't a fortuitous time for him to get married tomorrow on Shiva Subatamos, which is the beginning of the downfall for him. So there's no question he's going to get married to you tonight. Now after he lived with her, what happened to him? He dropped dead. That means she conceived Oyved when? Last night, Shiva Subatamos. So while Mashiach is born on Tishabov, the beginning of Malchus Yis David sprouts on Shabbat Shabbat Hamad. Meaning, once we have this idea that on a time that God is angry at us, He is closest to us, and that's when Mashiach is born on Tishabav. So we ask, well, what happened Shabbat Shabbat Hamad? Incredibly, what happened? What do you mean? The restoration of Malchus Yis David, the conception of Oyved was the night of Shabbat Shabbat Hamad. Let's take a look at that insight. Look at number 10. Says the Helga Chsam Soifer in the Drushes Chsam Soifer, page Shin Beis Amar Beis to Shin Gimel Amar Alf Yesh Lasis Tamu Davar Amar Chazal Kilois Ketsir Achitim Asayrim Ein Palchus Mishlosh Rodas No less than three months Vine Kasa Betargam She Basa Beera Pesach She came Beera Pesach Vim Kain Kalu Gimel Chadashim Tes Vav Tamos The three months were up the fifteenth day of Tamos The He Shilcha Now I'm not so sure about that I would have said it's up. 14th, because Erev Pesach is... Okay. V'yadu'a, and she sent to Rus that night of the 16th. V'yadu'a ha'yolahem, they knew, kimi yudzayin tamaz e'lech kashal koychos shel shevet Yehuda. The koyach of shevet Yehuda is weak. V'reya mazle, and their mazel is bad. V'loy misamna milsa, and it's not a good omen, l'kadesh isha. And he knows if he doesn't marry her to, um, tonight, he's going to have to wait until... Shabbos Nachamu, and the prices are really high that Shabbos to get an Afraf, book a hotel for the Afraf. Things are going to delay until this, the time passes. Therefore, he hurried. He figured his man Meruba were Choshish from Misa. He might die. Ah. 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 Probably, listen to this, if he died on Shiva Asur Batamos, he must have been born on Shiva Asur Batamos. So, I want to take this opportunity to wish Boyaz a happy birthday. And that means, by the way, today's the yard side of Boyaz. Maybe we should make a tikkun even better. Maybe we should make a tikkun for Boyaz. Hayaz yom leidasai, ki akaz rom amalish noisem shal tzadikim. U Boyaz hayo azak in gadol, so he probably got very worried. Now, if he passed away on Shavas Thomas, he was probably born then. That means every Shavas of Thomas, he got very worried. Therefore, he figured he's, he's going to settle the matter that night. The beginning of the sprouting of Malchus based David was Shavas of Thomas, like in the same vein that we say Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av. By the way, Somebody sent me, my friend uh, Shoma Kaman Gro sent me a piece from Rav Yonis and Ibeshitz that Mashiach is conceived on Asara Bateves. So we have all the, all the Tanesim, even though uh, superficially they seem bad, but there is a certain kernel of, of Smicha of the Malchus based of it. 
So Marva Rabbi say, is Tisha B'Av a good day? It's a really bad day. But if you're from Malchus Beis David, you know, you feel a certain potential for salvation on Tisha B'Av. Well, says the B'nai Yisachar, Rabbi, Rabbi Yudha Nasi, who did he come from? He came from David HaMelech. In fact, there's a look at number 12. The Gemara says in Masech the Shabbos, Amar Rav Shmo Bar Nachmini, Amar Rabbi Anasan, Kal HaOimer David Chata, anyone who said that David sinned, Enoi Ela Toya, is making a mistake. Shenemar, because the Pasuk says, Vayhi David, L'chol Durachav Maskel, David in all of his ways was successful. Vashem Imoi, Efshar Chet Bali Yada, you think a sin could come to him? Ushchine Imai Elama Ani Mekaye Madua Bazis Hazvar Hashem Lasis Hara Shabikesh Lasis Lai Also, when we say David was um, Lasis Hara, it doesn't mean he did bad. He wanted to do bad, but it didn't work out. Now listen to this. Amar Rav David Rebbe. Rebbe, the Osimi David, Rebbe who came from the house of David, Mahapich Badarsh Beschuse de David. He always tried to be doirish how David never did Navera. Why? Because Rebbe came from David, so Rebbe always wanted to defend the practices of David. Got it? Rebbe was a descendant of David Hamelech. So says the B'nai listen to this. Bikesh Rebbe Lakar Tishabav. Rebbe wanted to be Oikar Tishabav. Why? Venera Ali says the B'nai Yisachar, look at number 11 on the third line. The reason why Dafka Rebbe wanted to be Oikar Tishabav. Why? It says, It says like this If somebody in a family passes away, the whole family needs to worry. If a boy is born, the whole family is cured. Now on Tishabav, after Chatzois, is when David is born. Now Rebbe came from David. So Rebbe, now on Tisha B'Av, Shechali B'Shabbos, Rebbe came from David. Rebbe felt, what am I doing over here? Today, today I don't have to worry anymore. A boy was born. Which boy? My ancestor David. So Rebbe felt already the coming of the Geula on Tisha B'av because he's a descendant of the Malchus based David. So therefore Rebbe said, you know what? Hol v'yidchi yidchi. Once Tisha B'av is being pushed off, let's get rid of it entirely. Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av. But the other Chachamim, they were not from base Rebbe, so they didn't have such an objection to Tisha B'av. Marv Rabbi, so what do we see from here? That Rebbe was somebody who, because of his connection to David HaMelech, was more free with the tightness of Tisha B'av because he saw these seeds of redemption in Tisha B'av. Can we then extend what the Bnei Yisachar is saying to explain why Rebbe was the one who bathed on Shavasa Batamos? No, he's only Mekel. Well, anyway, it's not, he's not going to be Mekel on straight up on Tisha B'av, but anyway, only, uh, only when it's on Shabbos. But by the way, why is Rebbe the only one who bathes on Shavasa Tamas? What's Rebbe got with Shavasa Tamas? The same thing. Sam Soifer says, Oyved, the progenitor of Malchus based David, was uh, conceived on Shavasa Tamas. Maybe that is why Rebbe bathed on Shavasa Tamas. He felt he could be a little bit more lenient. Why him? He was a descendant of the base David. So I want to suggest, Besiata Deshmaya, uh, Alpi Drush, Verachatz Bekroina Shel Tzipayri Beshiva Asar Batamas. In Aramaic, the word Rachatz has another meaning. We say in the Brach Shemei, Be Ana Rachatz. In him I trust, I hope. I yearn, I hope. Kroina could be the glory, Karen. Tzipayri. Who is called the Tzipar in Chumash, in Parshas Lech Lecha? It says, Avram Avinu took all the pieces of the sheep and he cut them in half. V'yes ha Tzipar loy basar, the bird he didn't split. Rashi says the bird, Klal Yisro, is compared to a bird. All the Umais will dissipate, Klal Yisro will last forever. Rebbe virachat, he had bitachain. 
Bikroina in the glory, Shel Tzipari of Klal Yisrael on the 17th day of Tamas. In other words, he yearned for the restoration and the glory of Klal Yisrael and Shabbos of Tamas. Why, Rebbe? Why did Rebbe, why was he Rochat Bekeren Shel Yisrael and Shabbos of Tamas? Because he understood that Shabbos of Tamas is the conception of Mashiach, conception of Oyved. My Rabbi said, let me tell you something else about Rebbe. The Yushalmi and Klayim in Parsha, in Paraktes, Halacha Gimel, says, look at number 13. Rebbe Nachman B'Shem Rebbe Mana, Maisa Nisin Nasu Ba'isa Hayam. Many miracles took place on the day of Rebbe's Petira. Erev Shabbos Haisa, it was Erev Shabbos. V'Niskansu Kal Hayarais L'Hasvidai. And all the cities gathered to eulogize him. The Ashirune Tamni Esrei Kenishan, the Achtune Lebeis Shroye, Utala Loin Yoima, Adshay Kal Echav Echav Magia Lebeisai. There were a lot of people at the funeral, and the day was suspended. God delayed the coming of Shabbos on that day so that everyone could get home. Umamali Lechavas Mayim. And they filled up their pitchers of water, and they lit the fire, the candles. Kivan Shishaka Chama Kar Hagever, the sun um, set, the rooster crowed. They were worried, maybe they were Mechalo Shabbos. Yatsusa Basko Va Amra Lahoin, call me Shaloin Nisatsu Seda Sharebi, Yehimavusa Lachayo Lamaba. Basically, anybody who was not lazy about eulogizing Rebbe would go straight to the world to come. And the Gemara says, there was a certain launderer who was lazy, so he figured, Oy vey, I lost that on my Olam Haba. So what did he do? He jumped off the roof, and he killed himself. And then the Baskok went out, him too, he'll go to Olam Haba also. Says the Bnei the day that Rebbe died was Erev Shabbos. And everyone honored him by being Isaac in his Levaya. And everyone came home, and there was enough time to get home. We don't find other tzaddikim who passed away on Friday that God, so to speak, makes the day longer. You know why? Because Rebbe was so machshiv the kayach of Shabbos, that he said, Shabbos should push off Tishamov! So because he honored the Kedusha of Shabbos, by doing that, his schar was that Hashem pushed off Shabbos for his honor. Marv Rabbi said, let me just share with you one more thought, and then we'll, we'll call it. We know there are 22 days in the three weeks. Three weeks, 21 days. How many days of Bein HaMetzarim in Tamaz? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Tamaz is chasar, so there are 13 days. Yeah? How many hours of the three weeks in Tamaz? Very good. 312. What's the significance of 312? It's, well, it's 24 times 13. It's also 12 times 26. What's 12 times 26? 312. All, how many permutations of Yud Kei Vavke are there? There are 12. All 12 permutations of Yud Kei Vavke are, are alluded to. Meaning, let's explain as follows. We had so much Kedusha. We have so much Kedusha. We have 12 permutations of Yud Kei Vavke, 312. But Babin Hussein Harabim, we went into exile. Holchu b'shvi. They went b'shvi. They were all taken captive. All 312 were taken captive. But when Hashem has rachmanas on us, Yashuv Yirachamenu, He will return. Yashuv Yud Shin Beis. He will restore the 312. Right. Shvi meaning all 312 were taken captive. And when God restores us, it will be... Yashuv uh, Yirachamenu. So maybe we could say one more remez. Look back at number three. 
Rus is explaining, Nami is explaining to Rus how she knows that he's going to take care of this matter immediately. That time, Shavi, you know it's going to start tomorrow. Tomorrow starts at 312 hours, which are of bad mazel for the Malchus based of it, which are being taken into Shavi. So therefore, I'm explaining to you how I know that how Nami knew that Bayaz would settle the matter today. But now we understand that if the three weeks are bad mazel, not just for Klal Yisrael, specifically, who has their downfall? Malchus, Malchus, uh, the base David, and the base Yehuda. Memela, la'asid lavai, when they're restored to Yamim Taibim, the Navi promises us, Tzayim Haravi, the Tzayim HaChamishi, the Tzayim HaShvi, the Tzayim HaSir, Yiyah, the base Yehuda, the Sassan, the Simcha. And we learned in Upshat, Rebbe wanted to be Oikar Tishavah because Mashiach is born on Tishavah. Rebbe bathed on Shavas of Betamos because Oyved was conceived on Shavas of Betamos. And Rebbe had Rachatz. Rebbe yearned and hoped and was uh, Rachatz in the re- restoration of the glory of the Tzipar of Klal Yisrael on Shavas of Betamos. So we should talk about Zoycha that during these three weeks we should be able to restore all the permutations of the Yudkei Vavke that went into Galos and we should be Zoycha we should be Zoycha Mashiach should be born. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.